And my BR have train, which is sweet. So we will definitely see some cool stuff. Fallen's playing out of his mind. He likes train. That's that a recipe nice. for a good map. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we'll, I like we'll, the, we'll, I like the fallen showing. We'll hopefully get to see why fallen likes this map so much. Only time will tell what is to come of this. The second North American matchup for DreamHack Masters Spring 2020 in a group that features Furia, Liquid, MIBR, and Chaos. Oh! Whoa. Uh, somebody just yeah. plucked a man out of the sky. I'm not sure who did it, but somebody's yeah. dead there. Poor guy never touched the ground. Yeah, I Ooh, think Arch switched it, hit the guy upper, and then Henny killed the guy jumping off. There was some optical Four illusion there Art. that happened, but ultimately, yeah, it's Art who's star of the show. So, wow, cool. Nice round. They held it down. Let's see Let's... this. Art? So Henny and then... Right here. Oh, Art. Oh, oh, holy smokes, man. Just splattered him. Wow. That sucks. Sucks yeah, to be if him. you're not Art, okay. Yeah, it sucks to be yep. him falling out of the sky. That's uh, pretty cool. Like, nice 4K. Uh, that's a clipper, man. Yeah, that's one you save. That's a really nice, uh, like, nice that's round. Like going, it's like jumping, that's like going skydiving and, and just taking a bird to the face. Can that happen? I think so. I, I, I mean, why, can, why wouldn't yeah. it, right? Yeah, I've seen it happen to people on roller coasters. Imagine just on a roller coaster and then just, just smoked by a pigeon. That's great oh my YouTube God. content. Yeah, I gonna... guess so. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I'll, I'll go watch that. Maybe there'll be a compilation I can indulge in. Yuria, sometimes the one man show, also had an outstanding first map. I don't put stock in the Glocks on this round. There's no flashbang to go with it, there's not a smoke grenade. All this looks like Teferia is 580R. It's just how are they going to divide <clears throat> the pie up? These are not human beings. They are merely stats at this moment. Yeah, look, at these, look at all these stats <laughs> grouping up to run down into Yuri's ar weighing arms. Oh, and Henny. Oh, unless Henny can get a piece. Is this one of those moments again where like you do five guys on something and no one watches flank? Because that could have cost them, but they decide to charge outwards. And who could have expected that? Yeah. They share it. They, they split it up, half a pie each there for Art and Yuria. Nice stat pad for those two guys. No bomb plant goes down for MIBR. No kills so far in this game, Connor. Not a great place to start. Nope. But, I mean, maybe there's, uh, you know, if there's anything to take away, it's the solidarity that they'll experience. As nobody has kills, they're all on the same page. Yeah, you know, they're really figures. in it together. It's true. What they're in? A predicament. Yeah. For now. Pile, pile of mud. But they've got the guns. They've got some nades. And they could very well rob away an opening pick. It's up towards the top of box halls that Tacos punishes the aggression. Two CTs who thought they could take more real estate than they could afford. The mortgage payments crippling. Oh. And Taco denies them. But ha, okay, somehow, some way, we are back into the two versus two. All of Taco's success up towards that B site. I mean, he finds a clear B bomb site, but the bomb itself is fumbled on the footing of A. So Henny has found himself in a one versus two. Taco, a single point of health. They don't have the even bomb. Fall in 62. It's still out there. Yeah, he can push up to the same spot that K Serato played, be in vision of the bomb. And unless Taco, I don't know if Taco's going to trade or get info, but it might not even help that much. Oh, whoa, he's real close. Taco, no peek just yet. Oh, and he's got to look be aware everywhere, of everything. Man. Wow, he comes out late. Nice timing from Taco. Yeah, big round for Taco. Denying those first two players as they pushed up into the box halls and then also just staying tucked on one HP. You can see the uncertainty that he sowed in the brain of Henny as he was flicking and flipping back over towards Z, finds timing, knocks it down, and just like that, MIBR break onto the scoreboard early. Scary round. It's good that they didn't maybe force the issue and try to get the bomb too early, um, put their team in a, in, a very, in a precarious spot. So MIBR win the rounds. You know, they, um, they win it by elimination there, so no bomb plan on the round. They buy up, they spend most of their money, but uh, Furia, because they didn't have to upgrade, are totally fine. They buy into the op, they have lots of nades left over. Only half armor on everybody and one kit, but for the most part, they're going up against AKs. And again, they still have uh, the majority of their very important utility. That is their smokes. Um, and I think they still have a Molotov, yeah. Yep. 
Everything's still par for the course here in round four. Indubitably. Vinny's dodging grenades. Staying up close on Pop Dog, and uh, my eyes fall on Ivy. I think this is going to be the, the the turning point of the round, perhaps. But it looks like Fury are going to forego that Ivy fight. Really welcome MIBR to get to get close enough to the site. And what I really like is that once you get that close, it's almost like an instinct to follow through with the commitment onto the A bomb site, which Ooh. Fury are very much prepared for. Look at this. They're getting the aggressive timing. inside of T-Con. Nobody's to the left. They're all wrapped around this next corner. And the further they go, the closer they get. The first one's bagged. Kenny hits the shot and the follow-up from Chaos Dorado. There is a third player in Fallen, and he has that bomb, so he has to win these duels, or else that bomb is going to be cut off from the two other Ivy players who are also starting to pressure Henny. From both directions, he's being hit, but Vinny up from above guns them down, and Furia right back with another round win. Man, malt, my monster spray from Vinny just melted them like a like a fountain of chocolate that was it Ooh, they were off do? yeah just makes your mouth water to see these creamy m4a1 bullets coming out to stop the ivy aggression well done the m4a1 commercial right there folks i put a pot of hot fondue chocolate in front of you launders you can choose one fruit to eat it with what, what do you pick of course it's bananas all right what about and strawberries strawberries Ah, uh, okay. You owe me a soda. Don't you mean a pop? <laughs> True. But I didn't want to betray yeah, yeah. the colloquial yeah. phrasing that we're all used to, that we grew up learning. But that's true. I did mean pop because I'm Canadian. We're Canadian, so we say pop. Northern uh, American, Northern Americans. Americans in the Midwest, the Northern part of America say pop as well. It's not weird. Okay, there's a lot of people who say pop. It's not that weird. Uh, it's weird. It's probably weird. But, it's a little weird. So it would be believing in MIBR right now, because to be fair, just pistols yet again. Not a fun place for them to be in, but uh, they signed up to play this game. It's the nature of the beast. Castorado's going to line up a lot of bodies right here. There's two easy pickings, the third and the fourth downtown. Taco's still standing. He's going to go to the USP. Tippity taps his way to the graveyard as there's some sort of an answer. And all the while, KNG, what's he doing? He said, I'll see you at the bomb site a little bit later. Oh, did you guys say A? He comes in from Z, falls at the hands of Art, and Furia lead by three. 4 1. What's the buy looking like? Are we in op territory? I mean, we, he could op if he wanted to, op half armor. Uh, looks like KNG will indulge. Don't think that would be traded because he's going to be low on nades. KNG, great T side opera, of course, so why not? Time to put one on the board. Full nade sets here for Furia. They're at max strength. And Fur is not. Nice, manufactured an opening kill on the sandwich player, no less, and on Kay Serato, no less. That, that's a, an important scalp to take. It uh, opens up the site a lot more. As you can see, the smokes on the mini-map in Sandwich and E-Box, the only thing that wasn't denying them vision was Kay Serato at that point. So now they're worried about Olaf, they're worried about anything that was in front of Sandwich, but they started. They pushed up on the left side, so they have some of that vision back. This is a big opening for MIBR. We're, we're six rounds deep. They got that one round versus the, the lackluster buy of Furia when they tried to use what they had already purchased for the follow-up round, you know, the freebie. But this is a 5v4 in a full-fledged gun round. A good chance oh. to crack back into the score, but proactive play over towards that B site, that's going to enable them to cheat a player back through Z onto A. And with a scope down range in Henny, oh my oh. god, he shoots his toes off. KNG is going to be disbalanced as he tries to work his way into the site. One health for him, seven on fur. Another <laughs> dink? Are you kidding? This is incredible. These players, three of them shouldn't be alive, and now one of them finally falls. That's fallen himself. 
Yuri, he's on the bomb site, trying to deny any sort of a plant. TRK just beneath him gets shut down, and Fur and KNG, I mean, they're 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 frozen in fear because of their low HP. But KNG tries to move this one forward, gets the first, dies to the off up close, and we've got Henny trying to clutch seven seconds. He just needs to survive. There's oh. no time for the plant. He's just got to dodge them. The dance of death with Taco. He succeeds despite the time. Oh. He gets it. 5-1 for Furia. Let that one sink in. Oh my god, he got away. I can't, How did Furia win this round in the first place? Well, first of all, it looks like they had their chances. They did like 300, oh, nearly 300 damage to three people. Didn't kill a single one of them. They also rotated to stack inner that round. Worked on a, on a flank, but as that flank was coming out, MIBR picked the correct opportunity to execute outside. So it looked great. And that comes down to the last second and Taco can't get one bullet in on his running spray as Henny runs from the site. That's a 1v3 to his name because of that. Big moves, man, big moves. And again, we were talking about the importance of that round. I mean, think about what hinged on it. That was the gun round they'd had hoped for. The 5v4 to start it off. Now trying with the little that they had, still finding a little bit of footing. I mean, this is going to be something oh that they God. should have never won. Yuri responds back with another good headshot. Vinny trying to focus forward on this. It's a one versus two, and he is so fixated on the first player that he opens himself to the side, but he needs to decide which angle to hold. It's a tough one. He knows he's being distracted by KNG. That is the sole purpose. Excuse me, Taco. But now things slow back down because Vinny has done a good job of skating into safety. Slides back into the site. He is going to be caught in this lane, though. They're going to peek at a distance. He has the scope of the AUG, and he opts not to use it. Taco with the headshot. MIBR with the round win that should have never been. Man, that's nuts. I mean, even just that 1v2, there's so much to talk about right there. I love how Vinny tried to reclaim presence on that round. Meanwhile, MIBR used that bait in KNG to try to get them to double up again since they were low HP and then pulled off the eventual double peak on Vinny as he was falling back into safety. So much good done there from both sides, but because MIBR had the man advantage, I'm happy to see that they close it out too. And a gift from the gods, MIBR, winning that round when they should have no business doing so, now only have a double scout set up ahead of them. That's big. The grenade too, in fact. Good bit of softening damage done. Yeah, they've uh, malleted them down a bit for the scouts. Anything but 100 HP is scary on rounds like these. Colonel defense on the A site, top of the trains, lots of vision. There's a few exploitable weaknesses, but you want to take these risks when you have pistols. Split up into Ivy makes the most sense. Hardest to hold here with the pistols. Especially since Syria have been taking a more, more reserved approach, watching their backs as opposed to playing in Ivy. Whoa, that would have been a lineup of the year, but just the one from Henny. That's all that mm. happens here, Fallen. Laying down the law with the op at a distance. It's gonna allow MIBR to close the gap, get onto the bomb site, and even plant their bomb. So a third round for MIBR most certainly. And this is huge for them because there was a world not long ago where it seemed like Furia had gotten through the gun rounds and we're gonna ride that wave of momentum all the way across town, but a round they had no business winning is what puts us in this situation where MIBR looked good. Some pretty incredible shots being hit, I mean, from everybody. The weirdest part about this whole situation um, for MIBR is like, there's always somebody who's playing extraordinarily well. You know, Fallen's been inconsistent, Fur has been pretty consistent, uh, but you know, people are dropping off at different times and obviously they simply don't have Cold Zera, you know, which people forget is just like, he to this day is still, uh, you know, playing his top 10 game or whatever. So it's not it's not like it's easy to fill his shoes. Um, but they've had problems other than that that are 
making that are that are convoluting what people perceive to be the actual issues and um and you wonder though when you watch around when you watch some of these rounds you're like damn they still have what it takes but it seems like they they all can't play well together at the same time big picks easy openings and the follow through looks good bomb plant only one casualty you'll take that trade any day Okay, Serato Scout may be ready to give us a clip or two. Oh, Vinny. <laughs> Shooting the feet out from underneath Taco. And Taco had no idea. What, was falling back the right idea? He was, uh, yeah. Yeah, he really just accepted his fate there. Just got his kneecap shot off, thrown on the river. I think Vinny is one of the happiest Counter-Strike players we have in the scene. Yeah, his name's Vinny too, so he's like Italian mobster. Shoots his kneecaps off, throws him in the river. Hey, get out of here. Yeah, I'm walking here, huh? A fourth for MIBR. On the T side. Great start. This is nice. We're starting to watch the machine, the war machine of MIBR, really start uh, shifting gears. Mm -hmm. I like this uh, timing for the timeout. But definitely time. around where I'm curious what they'll decide to try to change. Everything's been very dynamic, so I wouldn't harp too much on things they've tried because some of their plays are like valid plays, but the timings have been weird with MIBR. MIBR are doing this thing where they're executing, but they're pulling back for like 30 seconds and then re-executing on the same site. They've done that twice, so Fury, I think they'll, they'll consider that. But you know what? Even on that round where they decided to go 3D and then try to retake towards A and Henny won that 1v3, that was actually so well done considering MIBR were holding back for 30 to 40 seconds. They gave them enough time Fair point. To, to rotate out, get B information, and come back before MIBR took A. And it's almost as if Furia were happy to see that it took A, and they just made that play with three people just in case. Flashbang central over here towards Tcon. Not gonna work out to the favor of Fur. In fact, TRK's flash is counted as an assist against his teammate. Vinny is such a reliable player. You really, you know, it's hard not to love him. Ooh. There's yeah, Taco. Well. Gets a bit of revenge, but there's an instant trade. So they maintain, plus K KNG is nice and low. I think it's been seared to a crisp earlier in the round by a Molotov. They've got this three direction split coming in on A. It's just a matter of finding the timings and more importantly, finding the headshots. TRK still zero kills. There it is. Breaks the curse versus Art. That's going to force the feet forward from KS Serato and KNG creeps on Ivy too. Henny not ready for that AK up close. KS Serato exposed to both sides. He knows he's in a tough situation, but is able to just back up and focus forward. And still takes the head of TRK. Oh. Nice foot shot from KNG. Yuri. Bat bat. 30 seconds left over as Bomb has to work its way up. Both players 100 health. Fallen swinging the off. And Fallen's at a distance. He's able he to get moved. into the ladder and duck right back out. Smoke he means he's going to get closer. And now Fallen officially has no idea where he's gone. A fake plant at a sprint to B. Go, go, go. Holy crap. He's really pushing the limit here. He's going to get the bomb down. If he gets it left side train, yeah, you can actually play back. He hears the footsteps on top of the train, too. And he should have heard that drop. 100%. Fallen's able to wrap back around it. There's no utility in this play. It's going to come down to the shot. Fallen, he's going to have to nail this. And you can see Yuri starting to figure it out. Gets the best of him. The rounded train, Mohan. It gives you more vision when players try to play behind it. And that's how Yuri picks up this clutch. Definitely a matter of angles there. I do, I do think that... Uh, Yuri, I feel like Yuri half anticipated Fallen to make a move like that because he is so comfortable in that combat opping like CQC style and in, in the 1v1s he always tries to be in the least expected position, not the optimal position and um, but as you can see, you know, feet, he saw them so early so he was potentially just a little bit patient there but it seemed like he was trying to wait out the walk back around um, on that angle and, and it paid off a good try. Really interesting round. A 1v2 there for Yuri. Ooh. 
Wow. Later fallen. He gets dropped by Henny and his corpse charred. And he's going to smoke that one off. I've always felt like the B bomb site would have better post plants if that oil train was just a normal train. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll let you think about that one while Vinny holds the line. Takes the time to tag the wall. You got to appreciate that. They can hear that at the top of the ladder. Now they're tilted. It's like spitting on them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dropping your hands in the ring. Psychological warfare. But, uh, you know, health pandemic, you can't spit on strangers anymore. It's true. Darn. Listen, it's Vinny, okay? Gonna shoot your kneecaps off and throw you in the river. Don't mess yeah. with this kid. Oh, there it is. Man, he's even toying with the idea of flying up that ladder. I know it. I'm inside Vinny's head. I know how the man thinks. If Fur keeps playing this dangerous game, he's coming Fur's for pissed you. because he knows he'd do the exact same thing in Vinny's position. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Yeah, yeah. If Fur had more health, it'd be it'd be the inverse. Oh, man, they're going to save. Fur's like, you watch my demos, kid. And that's that. Wow. And my BR going to call it off. Okay, I was ready for a clash. I was ready for the execute. I mean, if you think about how close they were at one point on, on the exit of Ivy, like, okay, sure. Fallen, he did die early to the op duel, the straight up 1v1. Um, however, think that with the smokes and the boost that they did over the server inside the hallway, like there was a world where MIBR definitely could have made a sprint for that A site, but a reserve decision to walk away and we will have to respect that. They've got the four rounds on the board already as our... Fun fact, Master told us the last time these teams matched up on train, it was 16-4 to the favor of Furia. So MIBR know that they've already done a decent enough job, but that they have also been locked out in the past. So I, I respect it. Save, rebuy, everything's fine. And another op duel coming out here from Fur. He tries to move his feet quickly towards T-Con, but he's stuck. Oh my oh. God, he doesn't know where he is. Holy crap. He is lucky that nobody high. caught him. Yeah. Well, I don't even know how that happens. He, I think he... He was so disoriented, he thought he was jumping around the corner to leave, uh, leave T-Con, I'm guessing. Get all the way back to spawn. Ends up, ends up almost sacrificing himself completely. Gun sticking out, wow, fast reactions. Good night, TRK. You did nothing wrong, kid. You tried your best. It was a good yeah. shoulder peek. You joined the server. That's where it all went wrong. But that's not true, because it hasn't been all wrong for MIBR. Just in the most recent rounds, seems like Furia have gotten their legs back beneath them. Yuri to the top rope. He's got someone covering his outer upper peak, so he's very much just focused on ramp. Despite being blind, still kills Fur. Ooh, Taco. Oh. He gets the further of the two kills, so Yuri's still afforded a little bit of close proximity. Tries to swing around the M4, but he too taken out of this one. So it's Fallen and Taco on top of each other. Too much lettuce falling out the sides. A couple of smokes and a flashbang to try and make this retake happen. They're just waiting for some sort of a push, waiting for that first one to fade so that they can continue forward on their endeavor. Get that one step closer. Deep smoke over towards ramp. That's going to block Fallen out of the post plant. Vinny, he's going to creep and crawl, try to get the backside of Taco, who dies already. So now Vinny's just going to try to basically body block, but Fallen finds two backs turn, and the time is getting low. <gasps> Fallen, that could have been the crucial kill. He just needs to get the diffuser off of it, swapping to the AK, killing KS Dorado, and ultimately winning the round. Fallen does it 1v3. Wow. He ends up going down, but what a mess. Holy crap. I mean, this is where Fallen's the most comfortable. So you, you you love to see him work like that in a situation like that. But wow. I mean, he made the play he needed to make. This is the only thing he could do. He had no time to rotate around. He had to go through a smoke, get that first kill, jump out. I mean, prayed that the op shot missed and then there was no one covering the plant. Switched out to the rifle. I mean, it's a lot of thinking per second there that Fallen did as, as messy as it was for Furia and from their perspective. I mean, he really had to pull out all the stops in terms of creativity to make sure he locked that one up. Walking into the crosshair of the off. Misses the mark. 
If he goes back for more, there's a lot more eyes set towards him, but he, what? Curves a bullet around the corner and nearly gets the one falling from the sky. No scope goes astray. Vinny tries to maintain control of the bomb site, but there's already so many T's flooding forward. Look at Fur, Mac 10 in their faces. They can barely breathe, smothered by the aggression here of MIBR, but it is just one player. The rest of them, hold on for the post plant, including Taco, who's so far deep in box halls that he's waiting for the flank. It's not coming. Furia, they're all in on the straightforward retake. A second kill for TRK here. This is huge, his third in the round, and that's him bursting onto the scoreboard because he's had mm. a hell of a hard time getting it going here on train. Yeah, they're gonna have to turn it back out. Man, Art, I, I feel like there's a world where he hits both those kills. He, you saw how patient he was on the second player coming out of heaven, too. Slightly missed that flick. Could have made a world of difference. But either way, the pop explode here makes the most sense for MIBR versus that op. However they read it, if they decided that no matter what the setup was, they were going to try it, it ends up being the right call. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they you know, had a good idea about the adjustment that Furia were going to make. And... As he pointed out, TRK, a couple of great entries, just deny anyone else from even trying to retake. Closing moments of the first half now, and MIBR close in on a very respectable T side, but one where you think, man, they probably could have had an even better T side. They look really good sometimes. Yeah, they have to be happy with what they got, but I agree there's a world where it's more. Remember, though, that it was a round with just pistols that they, they even managed to break away from what was the initial barrier of Furia's defense. So they realize that Lady Luck has graced them with a little bit, but here we have it. An attempt back on the outer yard. KNG's getting dinked and he doesn't know where from. He knows there's a player back Ivy, but I don't think he realized it's Vinny again inside of these smokes toying with the USP. Another 3v2 man advantage made possible by Furia's pistols. Yuri at the top of the ladder. Art swaps out guns, finds them turned. Vinny's back in with his pistol. It's as vanilla as it gets for Vinny and still so delicious. Taco, his back is turned to the player who's about to lurk out. 19 health. A single shot should be enough to drop him. He's got eyes on Vinny. He takes more damage but still stands. Taco has a chance here. Looking to close the half with as many rounds as they can. The shadow gives it away, but Vinny, what are you made of, man? Three frags off the USP here in round 14. He's man of the match for me already. Even, I mean, if Furia win this, of course. Um, but at this point, no, on Vertigo, making so many plays, he's very often won his opening duel, especially when it comes to fighting in ladder. He shut down rounds completely, forced three players to stay because it couldn't take him out ladder. Here, he makes such a smart play sitting on top of the, on top of back six, inside of the smoke after he gets the kill, doesn't drop off even though Fallen comes to hunt him down, because then he doesn't have a play to get another sneaky kill. He stays up there with his USP and makes it two more. Here's Art, trying to hang on to the outer yard. This is a lot of pressure. Tenacious play from MIBR. Oh, Vinny turns his head away. Fallen could have extended and just blindsided him, but still both players are up until that. Taco from downtown with the MAC-10 takes more shots to the head. He's on 22 HP, swapping to the AK and falling in the end. Welcome back, my friends, to the second half of the second map between MIBR and Furia. Furia sitting a map up and leading by three here as they start the offensive side of train. A tall task ahead, perhaps. We shall see. They've got some utility and they've got early numbers going towards the inner bomb site. But hold on, look at this offensive being thrown up by MIBR. They've already established a headshot. And seeing as TRK only has six kills in this map, that's a good time to pick one up. 5v4 in the pistol. Yeah, he stood around for the fight. Nobody's giving him another shoulder peek, so it looks like they're waiting, I think, to sell this almost as a fake, or maybe want to try to trap him, but they put presence on Ivy, which should sell as a big fake towards outside since TRK stood out there for so long. They're making noise now. Taco's tucked into the site, but dropping another player means that nothing is going to be that convincing. A couple more pistols trying to clap at a distance. Here's Taco out from the corner. Maybe jumps the gun, but I mean, so be it. If he's the only casualty, then this is an excellent situation for MIBR, but Yuri's still trying as he can. Yep. Nope. Gets executed from behind, and MIBR pick up second pistol. This is great for their CT side, especially considering the success of the first half. Yeah, it is. And it looks like, you know, we might have a tie match now, and there's a lot to learn about how comfortable Furia are on their 
uh, T side. Now, it's sad to see Vinny not on an SG. You know, this is a guy who, who's using it right. well before it got uh, it got made even cheaper. This guy who loved this gun, and it was a uh, it was something that powered him up on maps like Train as well. And oh my God, Taco! His aim has been delicious. He is doing so much good with just this MP9. Not an ace. Money. But honestly, Money. go for it, my friend. Money. Put a little cilantro on that and hit the fifth kill. But Vinny's like, no, that's the last thing you're going to get, my friend. I'm yeah. going outside to win this round. I'm going to feed that one to Fur. Excellent usage of the MP9 there. One magazine, four kills, three of which by way of headshot. So, hello, Taco. We see you. Keep it going, yeah. bucko. Yeah, se 17 frags. He was super crispy. The only blunder that he had was dropping the spray on Henny in a very tense situation, running around the train. Apart from that, he's been delivering on all fronts. Hey. And yeah, and maybe you aren't in the driver's seat, but you know, the, the CT side, is, is it, it can be pretty difficult to read. So yeah. I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do here. They're definitely making a reach for the wheel. We're gonna take this car down a cliff though, Furia. Gonna fly out this B bomb site, perhaps. Okay, and G's ready for it. The defense comes in the form of him and Taco. Taco's still on that MP9. The garden hose. But because there has been zero pressure at that A site for two rounds in a row, they've also got fur added to the tally here. He's gonna try and throw out that Molotov while his two teammates fire off. And Taco, good for another double, but Yuri does the exact same with the better weaponry. So much damage still added to the players who are standing for Furia. All three have to be cautious here. Little smoke spam as they chuck bomb over to the site, flash through and denied. Henny gets the kill and he knows that that utility came from a helping hand inside of Z, so he could be ready for the last kill, which is in fact fallen. Potential clutch in the cards. Ooh. And oh. down he goes. The headshot connects. Excellent round from Henny. Well done from Furia. I mean, again, I think I'm getting I'm getting uh, flashbacks to Vertigo Mohan in the sense that at no point did any of those ten players think that something other than a B hit was going to happen. Yeah, it's not a, a good point. Yeah, it's not a surprise. That was a wonderful flash dodge there by by Henny. You got to say, first standing in that smoke, running around. He was asking to be fired, uh, to, to be sprayed at, but then calling for the flash as he knows he has the CT's attention was a good play. But Henny, off an amazing reaction, turns perfectly to come back and kill for, and then get a kill to follow. And that, that chain reaction of him getting a kill afterwards is what seals up the round and make it makes it look so dominant for Furia in the first place. Ow. On the pistols. Fallen has the op. You know, this is the guy I want to follow around on the CT side because he will find kills. That's a beautiful trade from Yuri. E and poor Taco just on that USP, but there's another player here. Oh, yeah. And it's KNG. Oh, no. A bit of a blunder. He oh. finds Yuri with a Molotov in hand. Absolutely unsuspecting target. A deer in the headlights. But he gets skewered by the antlers, pinned against the wall, eviscerated. That one's going to sting. That one's going to sting. I know we all want to dogpile on KNG right now. I feel terrible. I think we've all been here, okay? We've all been here. Oh, God. He's just drawing his silhouette with a chalk outline, okay? But not actually killing the guy first. So that's sad. That, that happens, but it happens. And I'll say, it happens a lot with a deagle. Usually not the whole mag, but sometimes three, four bullets. My heart goes out to you, KNG. I think we've all been there. We have. Whoop. Dodging the op. KNG no longer working with just a deagle. And Taco, the top fragger. Well, he's playing with the idea of peeking around that corner, but he should not. There are AKs trained on him. And eventually, Fury are going to have to make their move. So here comes KS Serato, getting ever closer, putting a smoke past it and enabling Taco to go for the peak while KNG locks down ramp. And Taco wastes no time dropping down into this. So three easy kills, it seems, for MIBR. The fourth added to the top and the op closes shop. That is MIBR on nine. 
on the one hand, you can hit a site repeatedly and hope that a team can't fix their mistakes and then try to change it up once that happens, but then run the risk of being a bit predictable when you decide to change it back to A. Um, or you could try to fake the site and then maybe bait the rotations into the fear that MIBR uh, are going to assume it's B once again. And that might work out a little bit better. But kind of trying the same thing and expecting MIBR to not change anything at all. Maybe it was a, a bit of a mistake. Whoa, oh, well, okay. Well, here, here's a wrench in the plans, right? Because he goes out for a very normal pick, but loses the op and doesn't get a kill and makes it a 5v4. So now suddenly Furia, if their plan is that they just like B more, they want to go back for it, they have a much better chance of entering in here. The other thing I find is interesting though, is Taco's by far and away the best player on the server right now for MIBR, and he has been locking down B with two kills almost every single round. But most of the time they're still losing because of his teammates. But still, Furia love the site. Big headshot. Fallen's still gonna be in a playmaker position. He's got backs turned. Oh my God, he's still alive despite walking into what could have been three crosshairs. Not destined to stand for long. However, here comes Spur inside of the flames. He knows he needs to commit to the fight. And Taco, well, he said it's been the fault of his teammates, Mohan. He finds himself all alone. Yeah, and no, here's a round where he's got, he's, he's got 190 ADR so far and uh, his teammates have gotten two kills, but this is a good kind of fake out from Furia. They get the first kill, so MIBR doubled down on the fear that it's gonna be the B site. And as we can see on the mini map, you know, two players dying in rotator spots out of Z means they weren't comfortable on the A site. Absolutely no one watching Ivy. Fallen was the one to take presence inside T-Con control, so they were not prepared for this whatsoever. And Furia threw their outside smokes via inner as well. So they dropped one in the back of Z so that they could help themselves rotate out through ladder and make some space and eventually trade out. Uh, fur and friends. So I I think, you know, it's a drastically important kill that you know, KNG drops on that push, as legitimate as the peak is, just because I think that was like a defining moment for MIBR um, in their in their strategy. They shut down B so well, they could force Fury to think about going A. Fury are probably a little bit scared of B, but then they get the 5v4 and both their options are open once again. Quick one. Furia trying to charge headstrong into this A-bomb site. Art doing a good job of dodging bullets inside of the smoke and just continuing forward here until finally Fur will put a stop to the first, a second at bat, and Yuri is down. And now a 4v3 set to unfold to the favor of MIBR. But the problem here for Furia is that they're already committed to the site. Their players were already prepared to trade forward off of that initial bit of success. The start of it stopped and the tail end of the caboose kept rolling. Fur finding another one blindsided. So Henny having to clutch this in a 1v4 with 10 HP. I think not. Furia, they found the open door, Launders, but it seems it was spring loaded. And once they got halfway out, it very quickly clamped down on them. Nothing wrong with throwing out a fast outside exec. And as we can see once again by the minimap, they made a lot of progress. But why, where was the back six flash for Art? You know, once he's at the point of hell, Getting that far that fast without any teammates dying and getting through sandwich while his teammate, their, one of their teammates already gets a kill. How come there's no more supporting flashes to help them transition from spot to spot? Why are they forcing him to take a fight dry into Ivy when they're trying to pincer it? So that flash could have been valuable for both the Ivy guy and uh, the guy back six. And there's players in TCON that hadn't been hurt yet. There's a little bit more utility there. I think they could have had a much better execute. Well, some tech nines. And only a couple of flashbangs. That's what they're going to try to rock and roll with to get down to the B-bomb site. But uh, a Molotov and a strong defense is a stern warning. Two more kills to the tally. And it is just Yuri left over here. So, Furia. Their lead now near non-existent. We started this half 9-6 to the favor of Furia. And now only one point separates us as MIBR hit 11. Now, we had the 11-4, but this time MIBR pick up the pistol on Vertigo, called into question Furious T-sides and how comfortable they were in general. And it feels like their problems have manifested in different ways here on this T-side, but they still look kind of uncomfortable. Do you know what I'm saying? Big letters for big players. Fury are the only Western team in Masters with more capital letters and lowercase letters in their in-game name. I guess there's no interesting stats to bring up. Um, Mohan, how come Launders is all lowercase? 
Why not? It a used to be. L? When it, I, originally it was all uppercase. That's how I start. Like made the name first. It was all uppercase. Uh. And then, um, yeah, I just changed the typography of it as I got older. I don't know why. Maybe it's because you mumble. So, you know, you're not allowed to use all caps. Mm. You're not a screaming yeah, it type. Could be. Yeah, sometimes you know, I'm yelling. Launders. Sometimes. Launders. <laughs> it's not launders. Not like Scrawny. Out here on this A site. KS Serato already trying to get out yet again. But uh, they are stopped pretty quickly. Fire will do that to you. Art, though, still finding angles here. Instead of playing up the train lane, he gets over to the bomb site itself and peels one off at the side of Z. So, 4v... Excuse me. 5v3. Until that grenade hits the mark. KS Serato had a second chance for the duel, taking a dink, but still taking names. And here comes Taco. 27 frags. As he interrupts the bomb plant, Yuri's gonna go back at it, and neither Taco nor Fallen can find line of sight. Despite these three Ts being tagged up already, they still stand tall, and they stand high. One of which, on top of the T-Con train, yeah, top of the T-Con train is the most kind of key position here. He'll get Close initial fight. contact. Cover the bomb site on both sides now. Yeah, Taco can't even try this. Another round where he's got two kills, but no chance of winning. Damn. And you start to feel for him. Individually, this is a huge map for Taco. He's putting up the numbers. And, and even in this round, he came into the bomb site, which had already been compromised, and starts picking up pieces, trying to clean up the mess. Yeah. I'm, I'm honestly, just, you know, I'm a little bit weirded out by it feels like Fury are doing something similar. Or sorry, it was their CT side last game. That was a bit weird. Uh, in yeah. in this map, it, it, it kind of feels like Art is like, all right, I'm going to do I'm going to make a play. Everyone play around me. And he yep. runs out to the front of bomb train and everybody follows him. And he's just confident in his face creation abilities, not dying abilities, like get one kill ability that everyone else can play around him. It's, it's working, but it's also made for some kind of strange rounds. Of course, and I understand why you get confused between the T and CT side of Vertigo, because th that CT side launders they played it like at a times felt yeah. like a T side, exactly. Um, and, and now that's transitioned into the same flavor for this half. You know, we didn't get that when they were defending on train, understandably. Uh, they're being a bit, it looks like uh, MI, MBR are just reading this so correctly. You know, no noise outside. Fury have been rushing outside with a lot of grenades. This time they cut presence entirely. And now MIBR quite simply do the smart thing and rotate three inner. Flashbangs on point. Taco, easy pickings on the first one and great follow up damage. So again, he finds his impact plus 150 ADR. TRK has eyes above, but. Whew. Thank goodness for him, KNG can find Yuri, who had already snuck past him. And that op through smoke drops bomb. Disgusting. MIBR, four survivors, as they're going to take a 12th round. And it comes from the backline opping of KNG mm. after Taco had heavy impact. KNG could have been holding uh, T-Con if somebody had thrown the smallest fake. You know, the guy who's most susceptible to rotating is the guy who's the fastest rotate. He'll go in and out of Z to watch upper B or to watch T-Con. And if Fury had thrown anything to try to sell a fake, then they could have grabbed his attention and maybe had a better time getting into the B site. Also, there may not have been two players pushed up close with rifles waiting for their entrance. But man, did this look extremely predictable from the perspective of MIBR? Because they rotated so early, no hesitation, and got extremely comfortable. I think that uh, Fury have been made it very clear. On rounds they go outside, they throw a lot of grenades. Oh, oh my god. Oh. And, and the rounds where they're going in or they cut noise. They've just done that too many times. Wow. Look at this. Also through smoke. The third one. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Two thirds. <laughs> Two thirds of his op picks that round completely through smoke. So that sucks if you're Furia. Indeed. Feels great for MIBR. That's going to put them in an excellent position. Look at the economy here from Furia. Near non-existent. Yeah, they burn a lot of utility as well. They're not using it all to get into the B site. It would be used in the post plant. They're not even expelling it, though, as they enter. So I think they might be better off at least having somebody throw something small outside to pull run one rotate. I mean, the B site is the easiest site to fake out. If you run into a B site on train with three people, you're really messed up, yep. especially in a 5v5, right? Because this is a site that people play with one person very comfortably and still win rounds all the time. 
Whoa, they bought. All in. This is wild. I mean, you can see how limiting it is. They really couldn't afford too much. Armor, deagle, and a smoke if you're lucky. Damn, that's ballsy, but really gunning for the 14th round, I suppose. Furio, they want in now. Lock your doors. Hide the children. Wash your hands. All great advice, really. Mm -hmm. Take general. a shower while you're at it. Why not? You smell bad. I've got to say, the, the best thing about remote casting, Mohan, has been that I no longer have to smell you. Yeah. They don't even try to do Ivy, but they've got the Ivy Opper staring down Ivy. Uh, at least cements the defense a little bit. Maybe makes it a bit easier for Furia. So they threw someone to the other side. Oh my god, he crossed again. Dude, this is tense. Yeah. You can see it. MIBR not moving. Looking to lock it down where it stands, but Art just, I mean... He looked... Way too easy. Have a pickup on that one. Now, pressure comes out from ladder. Oh, wow. Okay, that's the kill. That's the one. Pistols overwhelming fur is one thing, but TRK getting his head cleaned off is a real issue. And KNG, he, he does stop plant. 20 seconds left over, and Taco's gotten himself into the mix on the 2v2. Yuri, he's going to want to plant this, but it looks like Taco's hunting for the feet. Down he goes, fallen all that is left. 10 seconds on the clock as Bomb is planted. Sees the player over towards Evox and gets into the cover. But because he is blind, he dies. And somehow, Furia, make magic happen with such limited guns. My faith was low at a certain point when all noise was cut there and they were about yep. to entry out. I mean, just because they had low guns too, you know, that made it a little bit worse. But MIBR did not seem to move a muscle. So they had all of the correct people in the good positions outside to try to defend or trade out a bit better. But man, the one dig from, from Henny and then the instant kill from Yuri just locked it up. The guy top six could have easily made that a multi or shut down the pressure on that side. Imagine how much the clock bleeds down if he gets that kill. And also, MIBR shut down the Ivy guy who's supposed to be a lurk. Nothing hoodwinked them whatsoever. So that's a rough round uh, for, for MIBR. For Furia, they're wiping sweat off their brow. But I personally just don't think they're through the woodwork. I think that this could get scary in the next round. Um, and you would hope that MIBR do save because I think they, they still have a chance to pull this back. Because in my opinion, their CT side is looking a lot better than Furious T side. They decide not to go in on the buy with this. Oh, it's going to be tough. Furia, they yeah, made tough. it work with limited tools and MIBR opts not to even try. Just the pistols, single flash on KNG, but at least they've called the stack correctly. I mean, this is one of those wonky wild rounds that could somehow work out. It helps that they get the 5v4 first. I mean, it's curious to see how much Furia are gonna try to force the issue here. Furs grabbed himself a second kill, so we stay even on the 3v3, and they still have cover on the train. Yuri and Henny, those are the kills that matter. They clean up shop, they figured it out, and they decide to just go all in. You wanna fight? Let's fight. 5v5, Furia find 15. Wow, outside, last chance. They've got not enough, they've got not a lot of money here. So even them MIBR saved, they're going to be on half armor. They're upgrading to their guns, but they're low on utility. No upgraded pistols, not a single kit on the board. They've got to play preventatively now. If they allow the bomb to go down, their odds are quite low. We know Furia do like to play inner sometimes. And I don't know what their plan is this time around, but MIBR have decided to go aggressive. It might be a smart move. Or oh, damn art. Yeah, at least able to get that first one. Luckily, they did go in with two, but now Yuri is trying to create the space one better, and he gets shut down. So KS Dorado removed from the top of the train. This is huge. MIBR creating a clash outside and coming out better for it. But Vinny, he evacuates the route towards the B site, and he's going to commit to this while that bomb tries to find its positioning. Molly outside of Z, smoke down lane. He sees the CTs committing and KNG's out into the open. Another attempt from Vinny here. The ball's on this man. 1v2. Henny, oh my god, he gets fallen in the open. And now Fur with a health disadvantage is nowhere to be found. So this bomb plant comes through too. Or does it? Henny doesn't use the time to plant. Oh, and timing. Bottom. Timing yeah. is a fickle mistress. 
Oh my god, is, is he gonna push all the way in? Does he actually get away with this? Fur's gonna back up to the point, yeah, he's gonna go towards heaven, but he won't spot him. Holy smokes. They trade bomb sites. What and he's is this tomfoolery? And he's probably thinking he went for the big plant. He's probably gonna Dude, plant. Yep. Yeah, back bomb. Henny just spinning there, trying to find it. And Fur, oh no, he still thinks it's B. Now he realize. Yeah, okay, he's coming. And Henny, interesting position to try and play this. I like it. He's ready for the peak. And just like that.